The Vatican is always hiding secrets, so what about them hiding UFOs? Hello everyone and welcome back to our channel. I'm your host Emily and today we're counting down our list of the top 10 mysterious UFOs seen over the Vatican. Coming in at number 10 is the orange disc. In 2020, a report of a UFO over the Vatican in 2007 came to life. UFO hunter Scott Waring believes the unidentified flying object's shape closely resembles a flying saucer. He said on his UFO sightings daily blog, this report is from 2007 but was just reported today at MUFON. An orange disc was caught in a photograph over Vatican City. UFOs have been seen over the Vatican before, but orange UFOs are usually seen in South America and Central America, so this is odd. The object is a disc viewed from the side. The disc doesn't have a classic hump, but instead its upper center comes to a point and lower center is flat, no bulge at all. For me, I can clearly see this is a disc. It's a little in focus, so it's not that far back. It looks to be about 10 meters, 33 feet across. If it was traveling fast, it may have gotten caught by accident. This is absolutely real and absolutely alien in origin. Then Scott said the Vatican stance of alien life comes mostly from scientific analysis of chemicals, substances, and textbook strategies of old. Vatican astronomers would never confirm any UFO as being real unless it landed in Vatican City. Number nine. First crash ever. The world's first crash of an unidentified flying object, UFO, happened in Italy in 1933 during the reign of Benito Mussolini, Italian researcher Robert Pinotti claimed. Roberto spoke to the Daily Mail and even shared evidence to back his claims. Now, Roberto is the president of the National Ufological Center in Italy, and his research has been met with skepticism within Italy itself. Now, Roberto and his colleague have been working to learn more about the 1933 crash in Lombardy and received some original secret documents about it in 1996. The documents were sent to the researchers by an unidentified source who claimed to have inherited these from a relative who lived at the time and was part of the secret department allegedly set up by Mussolini to study the saucer. Now, The documents also include handwritten memos that have a sketch and description of the UFO with portholes on the side. Number eight. Donut UFO. In 1978, unidentified flying objects that gave off green, red, and white lights and had a donut like hole in the middle were reported and, in some cases, photographed at dozens of places between Sicily and Milan in the north. It was reported by none other than the officers on duty in the operation of police headquarters. Dozens of people called, all with the same message. You see an enormous beam of green light just overhead. A lieutenant and non commissioned officer, driven by curiosity, as they said later, ran out on the terrace and one exclaimed, I see an enormous beam of green light. A bank clerk, Nino Raffagino, said he spotted an object just before midnight, made a dash for his 1,000mm telephoto lens, and came up with a series of pictures that appeared in the press. One taken when the object was stationary, according to Nino, showed a disc of light with a hole in the middle. Officers that were alerted by citizens' calls also snapped pictures and sent them to the newspapers. Taken while the object appeared to be moving, they showed a long, wide streak of light in the dark sky. Number seven, recent sighting. A low quality blurred image said to depict a UFO or a weird object escorted by two military aircraft over northeastern Italy made the news. The photograph was published by some local media outlets, which reported that around 7 20 p.m. on March 23rd, 2021, several witnesses noticed two aircrafts coming from the southeast and heading northwest escorting from distance what was described as a large square or diamond shaped object which incorporated from 10 to 12 fixed yellow lights. According to the reports, the object traveled very fast and left behind an intense trail and the only noise that was perceived was that of the two planes flying at a lower altitude than the square object at a much lower speed. One and a half minutes was the average duration of these sightings, enough to spark discussion of what this mysterious object was. So much so, the photograph was also brought to the attention of the Italian for National UFO Center, which started its own investigation. Number six. 
22nd sighting. There are episodes in Italy which whole crowds have witnessed inexplicable phenomena. On October 13th, 2016, a series of people spotted a UFO in the sky over Geneva. The sighting lasts for 20 seconds and there are those who had time to take photos or videos from different points in the city. The Air Force was contacted immediately, but no trace of the object was found in radar tracks. It seems like we'll never know what this strange object was, but I believe the people who saw it. Number 5. Pilot Discovery. On June 18th, 1979, the then pilot Marshal Giancarlo Sinsoni was returning from a photographic survey. Giancarlo, who belonged to the 14 group of the two fighter bomber reconnaissance wing of the Italian Air Force, was on board a G91R equipped with four Vitton cameras located in this way. Two on the sides of the front of the cockpit, one in the front position, and the fourth at the ventral position. With these, he had carried out the photographic surveys that he had been in charge of, but while flying, Flying, he saw something strange. He then arranged with the ground control body staff to go and identify an object that was detected by the radar. At the moment of the sighting, it occurred to him that it could be a solar UFO, but then he realized it was something different. The day was beautiful and he soon realized that the black spot had very different characteristics. It appeared to him in the shape of a dull black fuel tank and on its slightly flattened upper part, he noticed a fairing with two mustaches. This was underlying something clear and white which, in his opinion, was a kind of milky white dome. The characteristics of the surface did not allow the refraction of light, and the object appeared to have a length of about 6 to 8 meters and a width of about 3 meters. Now, during the sighting, which lasted about 5 minutes, Giancarlo was able to take more than 80 photographs that showed the object was always in the same frontal position or slightly angled. In fact, this thing was never completely visible from the side, and it was as if the thing wanted to aim the planet. Number 4. Factory Worker On April 24th, 1950, a factory worker named Bruno Facciani was working the late shift and stepped outside to get some fresh air on his break. Investigating a bright glowing light, which he thought was a part of a factory transformer problem, he was shocked to see a circular shape glowing object with a ladder descended from its bottom. At the top of the UFO was a greenish glow which partially obscured a light-skinned being. The unusual being appeared to be welding something on the craft. Then he said several other small alien creatures emerged from the craft, and in a moment or two, the ladder began to be drawn up into the mysterious craft, and the beings began to re-enter the craft through an invisible door of some kind. The full realization of what he was witnessing sent Bruno to run away from the frightening encounter. Now as he fled, he heard a sound like that of a large beehive. One of the remaining creatures pointed a type of weapon at him, and a beam of force knocked him to the ground. Although in pain, he was able able to watch the aliens as they prepared the craft to take off. The beehive-like sound increased as the object made its way into the skies and vanished from view. Now the next day, Bruno made a full report of his encounter to the police force, and there were signs still visible of the activities of the night before. Police found burn patches on the ground and indentation marks of an extremely heavy object. They also found some odd green pieces of a metal-like substance. Number three, Green Alien. On the night of December 6, 1978, night watchman Pierre Zinfredo was on a routine patrol when he stumbled into a series of terrifying encounters with extraterrestrial beings. His car inexplicably lost power en route to a client's unoccupied home. He then glanced through his window and saw four lights moving in the garden of the house he was coming to inspect. Assuming that the beams were coming from burglars, he climbed from his car with his revolver and flashlight in hand. Now, just as he prepared to leap out to confront these trespassers, he felt something touch his shoulder from behind. Pierre spun around, but instead of finding a human criminal, he saw an entity that he described as being an enormous green, ugly, and frightful creature with undiluting skin as though they were very fat or dressed in a loose gray tunic no less than 10 feet tall. It was flanked by two similar beasts. He said these beings were hairy, had greenish skin, had horns on the size of their faces, yellow triangular eyes and red veins embedded in their foreheads. He also described a unique self-illuminated mechanical apparatus that fit over their mouths. Now he was so shocked that he ran away and I think that was the best option. Number two. 
two, the abduction. In April 1962, Taylor Mario Zaccala was walking home through the woods when at a crossroad clearing where the path crossed a small canal, he felt himself struck by a sharp gust of wind. Jacked like an inverted bowl passed overhead and came close to the ground about six to seven meters away. From its underside came a cylinder which opened up revealing a diffuse of white light from which two beings emerged. They were one and a half meters tall, dressed in metallic suits, wearing helmets with antennas. He then approached Mario and led him into the empty interior of the object, which was lit by the same diffused light. He was unable to make out any details of the interior. They then let go of him as a voice from the inner part of the object, like one amplified by a microphone and as if were sounding in a vast space, spoke to him in Italian. The only part Mario could remember was a message that at the fourth moon they would return at one in the morning to give him a message for humanity. He was then escorted out of the object and somehow found himself outside his own door. His wife heard four loud knocks, which he does not remember making, and found him terrified on the front porch. And coming in at number one is the whistleblower. Pentagon whistleblower David Grush, in some more baffling claims, said the Vatican was fully aware of non-human intelligence's existence and that it assisted the United States in retrieving a UFO. Making some shocking revelations, David stated that a top secret UFO retrieval program was run by the United States for decades and added that the Vatican was involved in the first ever crash of a UFO, as per media reports. David stated that the UFO's first recovery took place in Magenta, Italy in 1933. He added that the UFO was in possession of Italian He added that the UFO was in possession of Italian dictator Mussolini's government until 1944 to 1945 when America was tipped off by it by Pope Pius XII. He added that the UFO was partially intact and was kept at a secure airbase until it was retrieved by the US after the fascist Italy's regime collapse. 1933 was the first recovery in Europe in Magenta, Italy. They recovered a partially intact vehicle and the Italian government moved it to a secure airbase in Italy until around 1944 to 1945. The Pope back channeled that and told the Americans what the Italians had and we ended up scooping it, David said. While clarifying whether the Catholic Church knew about the non-human existence on earth, David said, certainly. He said that his claims must be believed because I have the credentials and I was an intelligence officer. He stated that UFO sightings were widely known during Mussolini's dictatorship in Italy. Well, that's all for our list of the top 10 mysterious UFOs seen over the Vatican. Do you believe in aliens? Let us know in the comments down below and make sure to like and subscribe to our channel. I'm your host, Emily, and we'll see you next time. Peace.